that we can earn. It's nothing that we can buy. It is by grace we are saved by faith. He says the unmerited favor of God. But my people, in light of the New Testament, it means to be born again. And Jesus explains why being born again in John chapter 3. And it is by His Spirit we are born again. We can't do it ourselves, amen? The Spirit of God must touch our hearts and convict our hearts. And then we turn from sin and we turn to Christ for salvation. So my people, that means born again believers. If my people who are called by my name, the greatest name that we can be called is a Christian, amen? I mean, when someone sees me, I want them to say, there goes a Christian man. There goes a Christian lady. There goes a Christian boy. There goes a Christian girl. Because they live godly, because you can see Christ in them, the hope of glory, their new creations. God is still working on them yet, but there goes a Christian, a little Christ, someone who is like their Savior, Christ. And if you're trying to be something other than Jesus Christ, then you are not trying to be a Christian. To be called by His name is to be Christian, little Christ. That's what we want to be like. And that's what we want to be called as a Christian. So, born again believers called Christians will humble themselves. Another attitude of repentance. To empty ourselves. If we are full of ourselves and full of pride, God resists the pride, the proud, does He not? But He gives grace to the Again, humbling ourselves in brokenness before our holy God over sin. Brokenness over sin before God. Like Isaiah, when he saw the Lord high lifted up, he said, I am undone. Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among the people of uncleanness. Woe is me. So brokenness. Not pridefulness, not boastful. The only thing we can boast in is in the cross of Jesus Christ. Because if it was not for the cross, we would not be saved. That's why we boast in. So it's humbling ourselves, emptying ourselves before our holy God. It is a prerequisite of revival. It's to be broken over sin. Here's an example in the New Testament. And that is in James chapter 4. James chapter 4, beginning in verse 4. The scriptures read this. Adulterers and adulteresses. Now these are all Testament terms here that James is using in the book of James. This is the example of what God called the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God called Israel an adulterer. Because they would try to worship Jehovah and then try to worship Baal. They would try to worship the Lord, the covenant name for God, and then try to worship Asherah on the side. They would bring in paganistic painted by God into the temple, and the holy God said, You're an adulterer. You're an adulteress. You're trying to love. If you want to be a better person, if you want to be a Christian, it's only through 
that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. We don't want to do that, do we? No. <coughs> or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? He said, if you're full of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would tell you <coughs> that Jesus, Jesus, not something else, but He gives more grace. Therefore, He says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Clench your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. That's an example of humbling ourselves. Not wanting to be a friend of the world and the world's system of things, but to want to be a friend of God and resisting the devil and drawing nigh to God in our lives. That's humility. Humbling ourselves before a holy God and we over sin. Don't be prideful over sin. Don't brag about sin. Don't laugh about sin. But weep over sin in our lives. That's humbling ourselves. We have this example in the book of James. And as we read on in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, Pray and seek my face, God says. Seeking the face of the king is what this means. And it means to, to seek, to pray. You see, we need to pray more, don't we? When I mess up in my life, it's because I haven't prayed enough. When you mess up in your life, it's because you have not prayed enough. When you make decisions, do you pray about it? Before you go out in the day, do you pray? Do you go, as you go, do you pray? Did you pray before you even came to church this morning? We need to be people of prayer. Pray continually. Have a prayer on your heart continually. And seek God continually. Seeking the face of the King. Seek my face. You know, when you seek somebody's face, it is because when you seek, like when I seek the face of my wife, I want to be near to her. I won't be able to see her. And when you see somebody's face, it's because you want to be close to them. You want to be able to study them and look at them and be near and close and, and, and have an intimate relationship with them. That's what God desires of us. It's for us to have an intimate relationship with Him. He's not some old man upstairs going down thunderbolts. That's a pagan God. That's an example of a pagan God. But our God, we can call Him Father. And He is a loving Father. We can call Him Daddy. And He desires for us to talk with Him continually and to seek Him intimately. A relationship. And here's the thing. That's the attitude, the example of coming to repentance. And here it is, ready. As we read on in this verse, as we're seeking and praying in, in, in relationship with Him, you know, when we draw nigh to Him, you know what the Holy Spirit starts doing? And this is when people start falling away. The Holy Spirit starts saying, nah, it, that shouldn't be in your life. Uh, that part of your heart is given over to an idol, and, and you care more about that idol sometimes more than about me. And when you're drawing nigh to Him and the Holy Spirit is convicting and broken and moving your heart so that we can be 
relationship with God and Father, anything, whether it may be something good that the world may call good, but if it comes between you and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it is wickedness. So turn from their wickedness, as God called it, his people. So turn from wickedness, their wicked ways. And to be in a wicked way is not being <coughs> Minding the things 
of the Spirit. He says, a change of mind. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, see how interchangeable it is, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. We serve a one true and living God. Amen? So anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, He is not His. So it's a change of heart and mind to the things of the Spirit of God. Turning from sin, turning from carnality, a sin that a born-again believer can commit. A change from that, a turn from that, in turning to Christ, to the things of the Spirit. So, again, it says in our passage in the Old Testament, turn from their wicked ways. And when you're thinking the right thoughts, and your affections is on Christ Jesus, your heart is upon Christ, then you can walk in the Spirit. You cannot walk after the flesh, but walk in the Spirit, you see. And that is repentance. That's repentance. A change. Repentance brings about a change. So what does God promise us? Listen to this promise. Then, I will hear from heaven. Now, the good news, in light of the New Testament, God is in us. Amen? He is in us. We are the temple of God. He will hear us and will forgive their sin. That's the good news, isn't it? Now, if you're all prideful and say, well, I'm better than the guy next to me or the guy across the church from me, I don't do what he did or have not ever done what he's done, and you're a prideful person, and you need to repent of that sin. We all need forgiveness. All of us. And when we humble ourselves and seek him to turn from our wicked ways, a promise is he hears us, and he forgives us. This is, this is 